Hey everyone, what's going on? I'm Wayne Grayson and you're watching Equipment World. It's time for another episode of The Dirt, the construction and heavy equipment show. Last year, Caterpillar made a pretty huge announcement when it unveiled a new retail strategy that included on-machine pricing in its stores. And while sticker pricing has long been the norm in the automotive industry, that's far from the truth when it comes to construction equipment. But Alex Stockman is trying to change that. Alex is Kat's retail development manager for North and South America. And one of the first things that she says she noticed when she started the process of revamping the company's retail strategy is that in terms of price, a lot of Kat's compact equipment is actually on par with a luxury car or a well-appointed pickup truck these days. So that's where the company got started. Last year, Kat rolled out sticker prices for its smaller machines as well as the ability to start the purchase process online and then finish and pick up your machine at your local cat store. And now the company is expanding that initiative further into the lineup with more machines getting sticker prices and the ability to research price and financing options from shop.cat.com. And that's why I've asked Alex to join us today. And we'll spend the next half hour or so discussing this new retail strategy, how it has impacted cat customers and salespeople, and how it makes even more sense now that we're in the midst of a global pandemic. So let's get into it. Hey, Alex, thank you so much for joining me today. How are you doing? I'm good, Wayne. Thanks so much for uh, taking some time to chat with us. Appreciate it. Oh, no problem at all. So, hey, I, I just wanted to start with um, a kind of a quick uh, refresh um, in, in your own words of, of what is different today about Kat's re or, uh, retail strategy uh, than, than, than what was going on, let's say, at the beginning of 2019, kind of minus the obvious pandemic related impacts, you know, apart from that, if you're able to separate that out, uh, what's kind of different about the way that you guys are operating from a retail strategy standpoint? You know, since we last kind of sat down almost a year ago, um, we've had just a tremendous amount of momentum um, that's been carried forward by our dealers since, since 2019. You know, as a kind of a, a, a whole, we launched this strategy really globally in 2018 and, um, and, Every dealer in North America is completely bought in and they're just um, extraordinarily uh, aggressively looking at this strategy. Um, it's not even just looking at this strategy, they're really adopting it and they've, they've bought into it culturally, which is really what we were after. We knew we had to kind of, you know, here's a great idea from corporate, why don't you guys give it a try to, um, we want you to think about treating your, uh, your customers in a different manner, um, maybe reaching out to customers that you wouldn't normally touch on a regular basis and looking at ourselves and seeing how approachable we are as, a, as an OEM and then also um, as our dealers. So seeing know, and knowing that they've really kind of bought into that um, and, and even better, how we know it's working is that they have, they keep telling us stories about customer interactions and customer feedback um, that's extraordinarily positive and receptive. Um, and we know that that's working because those customers tell their friends uh, you know, when we're talking about this retail strategy, we're talking about these smaller customers. So um, we know landscapers, a landscaper doesn't just operate by himself. He's got his other buddies who are also landscapers and they talk and we, we, we understand that. So we want to make sure that everyone has a really good customer, customer experience. They're letting their friends know about it. Um, and that also that our dealers are really getting that feedback from those, that customer base that they're on, on target. Well, and, and true, like really the, the, the two major kind of changes um, that was part of the new retail strategy, you guys made a lot of changes to the inside of your retail locations. Um, and you also introduced uh, on sticker pricing um, to some of the, the compact machines. Um, and you, you also kind of expanded an initiative into, into online sales. Could you kind of talk about those two major changes and um, you know how you know the the process of rolling those out, what that looked like, where where the uh, kind of push to kind of really expand both of those things um, last year and that initial phase, where that kind of came from. Yeah. So um, last year, uh, I guess about October of 2019, I think we probably had about 12 dealers who had started to display price on their machines online. All of our dealers have an ability to sell attachments and parts online, but a few select ones had started selling, um, or sorry, uh, offering pricing on machines online. And really, you know, I had stated last year, the goal is to get all dealers on board by the end of 2020. 
Um, and I'm really happy to say that everybody is on, on board with uh, everybody, meaning all of our North American dealers are on board with being able to do that. Um, in, in that same light, you know, we, all of our dealers price their machines um, individually. They're all individually owned and operated. So Caterpillar doesn't actually set any machine pricing. Um, and, and knowing that there is going to be disparity between regions and other implications such as, as taxes and freight and everything else like that, we wanted to try to offer uh, a little bit more of a level playing, playing field. And, you know, again, going back to why we offered a re, uh, this retail strategy to our dealers is we really wanted to focus on becoming more approachable and getting greater awareness with these customers about that our machines are affordable um, and it is something that, that, a, that a, a normal person would be able to, to um, you know, achieve. Um, and so by doing so, we, we understood that really the automotive industry is kind of the benchmark for, for what we were looking for. And in that light, we decided to go forward with displaying a, a, an MSRP on, on several of those machines. And this way, we, at a national level, we can kind of showcase, hey, here's the, the kind of the sticker price that you're looking at, but you need to go talk to your individual dealers. And, you know, many of us know, I'm in the process of buying a new car myself right now. I know that when I go to the dealer's website, I see kind of a directional price. The machines that what they have is probably not configured for what I want, for all the options I want or don't want, and that I have different financing options that I need to really go sit down and talk with that dealer about. So we really approached it in that same light. We have, we offer an MSRP at a national level that is available on select machines. And then additionally, dealers have the option of pricing um, some or all of those MSRP price machines and show their own dealer pricing, which is going to give you more of an idea of what you would pay at your, at your local dealer level. Now, recently you also announced an expansion of that new retail approach. Kind of give us the details on the specifics of that expansion and how it was different than what you were just talking about, what was put in place last year. What kind of machines basically have been added to this initiative? You know, this is kind of a, 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 a really um, longstanding exercise and one was probably long overdue for Caterpillar to do. Um, what we really needed to do is, is really look at our, all of our dealers um, talk to our dealers, talk to our customers, find out what machines they are regularly ordering, placing orders for, and specifically what configuration do is the most common. What is the easiest to just get from the factory and then you could put some aftermarket options on there that, that would, would basically sell. What do dealers feel comfortable carrying the most amount of, of inventory for that would be ready and kind of easily embraced by, by, the, uh, by the, our customers? Um, so by doing that, what we asked dealers to do is say, really kind of help us hone down what configurations are the most important for you and your customer base. And at the same time, we went back to our factory teams and say, hey, we need to, you know, as part of our cost um, reduction measures, we need to reduce the number of configurations that we traditionally offer. Um, Caterpillar has long been a, a very... Um, I guess, customizable machine. If you wanted a, a track type tractor and you wanted to color it pink paint, I've seen it, I've seen it happen and done. You could do that. But obviously all those extra one-offs add additional cost into our supply chain. So it makes sense from a manufacturing standpoint to reduce configurations. It also makes uh, sense from a dealer process and inventory ordering process to reduce those configurations. So in twofold, we asked our the uh, product groups to reduce the number of configurations offered. And then also we went to our dealers and say, hey, here's the, um, he here are the configurations that we see are the most common with you all. And, um, and those are the ones that we're going to aim to put an MSRP on. Because we could go and, you know, if we priced every single configuration, I mean, it would be an extraordinarily poor customer experience. You know, half of, half customers don't even know what some of these, you know, our nomenclature is. So we wanted to really make it very simple and easy to, to understand for us as well as for our customers. And, and really what, it, what has kind of happened essentially is you guys started on the building construction product side, some of the, the more compact uh, machines, uh, compact wheel loaders, uh, machines like that, smaller excavators. 
um, backhoes. And, and now you're actually moving into some of the larger equipment like excavators, larger wheel loaders. Um, now, a couple of machines that still aren't included um, in, this, in this pricing strategy are, are dozers and articulated trucks. Now, is some of that because of the you know uh, vast amount of kind of customization or the vast amount of kind of like you know specking out that you can kind of do with these models or or is there something else kind of at play there why why you guys still haven't kind of moved into to those with with pricing so really you know when we look at who the majority of, of our of our customer base is for this retail strategy we're really looking at at uh, small business owners um folks who own one to three machines. By and large, you know, plumbers, landscapers, farmers, um, those type of folks, general contractors, they don't necessarily have much of the larger machines. We do see some play in kind of the small to medium sized excavators. And that's why we do offer prices up to like a 320. And then of course on the GC side. Down the road, obviously that might change. And so we're constantly evaluating the product lineup um, again, staying in touch with our customer base and understanding what do you guys want to see? What do you want to see pri pricing on? Um, and it's again, it's not that we are uh, have anything to hide with it. It's just it has not come in into such a demand. And really, this process of going through, um, you know, offering an MSRP, the amount of, of, of discussion internally within Caterpillar with our dealers is fairly significant. And so that, you know, managing that through that change, talking through it with our dealers, and then of course our, our, our loyal customers who've been with us for many, many years, we want to make sure that we're kind of striking that balance between promoting awareness and then also showing that we value our current customer base. Um, and so making sure that, you know, uh, if you're already being talked to by a Caterpillar sales rep or an outside sales rep, you probably are not doing as much shopping online because you have someone that you can go to. This is really for someone, you know, who's a small business owner who says, well, you know, the only time that I'm going to be able to look up or do any research on a new machine is going to be at nine o'clock at night. So it's really got to be super easy. And I don't have a regular, you know, an outside cat rep to, uh, to, to call on per se. You know, kind of in that that same line of thought, something you told me last year was that um, some of the reasoning behind moving two sticker prices on some machines was due to that similarity in price between kind of high end cars and trucks, something that people are used to shopping for, and and some of the company's equipment. So, with almost a year of this approach under your belt, do you still feel like that that analogy holds up, or or have you learned anything that makes you feel differently? It it seems like that it it, it does, um, kind of based on some of the things that you're saying in terms of who you're targeting with this kind of the small business owner, and you're still really it seems like trying to kind of stay within that range of where that that kind of analogy still kind of makes sense. Yeah, I mean we we are. This strategy is, I mean, four years old, probably for, for Caterpillar. So we still are learning on a, on a regular and daily basis. Um, we are encouraging our dealers to try different ways of reaching this customer base. We're trying to understand, you know, we're doing everything we know we, are, we should be doing and what we see in the marketplace, but what are we not thinking about? What are we, you know, what are we missing? And so um, I'd say that by and large, the strategy seems to be holding true and we still want to pursue this kind of, you know, mentality of, of approaching a luxury vehicle and sh or potentially shopping for a new vehicle, period, regardless if it's luxury or not, and kind of make sure that that process is the same, is very similar. We want to be very easy to do business with. We want to be very transparent with, with our pricing. Um, and then we also want to be able to transact very quickly. Um, we do, I, I guess, back to or as an extension of this question and maybe going back a little bit when you asked what's really changed with the strategy uh you know we had really aimed for our dealers to be able to transact quickly and we gave them a target and said we need you to be able to demonstrate that you can get a customer out the door if, you know if everything was great and they knew exactly what they wanted and you know they got approved for credit and everything else like that we want them to get out the door in a matter of a few hours versus days and you know, at first it was pretty painful when you start going through all of your all of your internal processes and you see, man, this this guy was at lunch and I didn't have a backup plan. And now, you know, a few years into the journey, the dealers are really seeing the value of it and embracing it. So I think that that you know, just that ability to kind of make sure that we're faster and easier to do business with 
if we keep that goal in front of us, we'll work out the kind of little tactics of how we achieve that. Um, working with Cat Financial is critical in terms of maintaining that, that velocity and making sure Cat Financial can return a very quick turnaround if, the, if a customer decides to finance through, through Cat Financial. Making sure the dealer has their own internal processes um, refined down so that they can quickly service a customer, get information to them quickly. You're not waiting for someone to call you back. You can get the information right at your fingertips. All of those things, you know, we've gone from kind of theoretical, this seems like a good idea to, man, this is, this is working and the dealers are seeing the value from it, um, which is great. And because we now, now we know that the customers are starting to see the value of it because they're, they're coming back and they're, they're letting us know that it's working. Let's rewind a year or so um, and go back to the kind of initial rollout of online sales and, and sticker pricing. Um, what was the customer reaction to both of those um, specifically? Uh, one of the thoughts on machine pricing uh, is that customers were, were likely going to be pleasantly surprised to see at a glance how affordable a cat machine could be rather than kind of like what you were saying earlier, rather than like acting like you had something to hide. Um, do, you know, d does that still kind of hold up? Has, has, did that kind of ring true to customers? What was the reaction to that? We, you know, really before we started at a wide level displaying uh, MSRP, we, we tried a, tr a few trade shows early in the year. We went to the American Rental Association show um, and we went to also to Con Expo, which is not a small show, uh, but, we, but we, we were able to display pricing on at both of those shows. Um, and with the amount of traffic that we got at the booth, we felt that we had a very strong uh, base to stand on that the pricing was not turning people away. Um, we, when we were at the American Rental Association show, several customers had come through. We had a 300.9 that was on display. And they said, man, I didn't know Caterpillar made machines that cheap. And again, I'm paraphrasing, but, you know, but I mean, to kind of, have that kind of aha moment that there's something that I can, you know, afford, or this is a machine that meets my needs. And it's totally in line with what I would expect, you know, from your competitors. We've heard a lot of different um, feedback that that's been the case. Um, you know, and, and when we talk about the, the variety of different options that we can offer to a customer between, you know, you can purchase the machine outright for the full price, you can finance it, or you can do lease options. Um, you can rent the machine first. You know, you're, you're talking about a whole other customer base that normally wouldn't even consider Caterpillar because it is becoming more affordable and we're finding ways, um, you know, not, not that any of those finance options are new, but just making people aware that those exist, you know, so that you can own a Caterpillar, you could lease a Caterpillar, you could rent a Caterpillar machine um, and just kind of give it a try. Uh, but both trade shows, uh, you know, we kind of listened in on a few of the customers and like, wow, that's... I didn't know that they, that was so inexpensive, uh, you know, and again, it's not, it's still a, 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 a 300.9, it's still like a $20,000 machine, but it, you know, relative to what their perception was, it seemed to really resonate with them. Um, I guess similarly, you know, we've had a few dealers who were very hesitant to put pricing on, on their machines. Um, and we said, look, let's just try it. Let's just put a machine out by the side of the road, Put a big sticker on it that says, you know, $3.99 a month. Price is as low as $3.99 a month. This particular dealer put that machine out on the side of the road and it sold in a period of four hours. And then they were struggling. They're like, well, we don't have a machine to put back on there. We didn't actually expect that it would sell, so we're going to have to ship it. But it basically, you know, you got to go through this pragmatic approach sometimes and let's just try it. Let's see what happens. What's the worst that's going to happen? You know, maybe 100 people drive by and they're totally turned off by the price. Or maybe someone was like, holy cow, that's totally in my wheelhouse. I just bought a new Caterpillar machine when I wasn't expecting. So, you know, one of the other things, you know, just kind of following up on, on that and, and that dynamic from the sales floor, what's the, the response to sticker pricing been from the sales floor in the sense that, you know, has that change altered the dynamic for salespeople uh, with the customer. Now, obviously, some of the intent with sticker pricing was to relieve some of the pressures that, that customers felt like that were on them when they walked into the store. So if they can quickly get an out-of-glance price, you know, they're, you know they're, they, at least they have that kind of what you mentioned earlier that you get with the 
browsing through a manufacturer's uh, website on terms of you know buying a car, you get that directional price. You know what your starting point is. You know what you can work down from. Um, and obviously that's giving some of that comfort um, to, uh, to the customers as well. But in terms of uh, that change to that dynamic uh, and giving customers kind of a, a little bit of an edge, uh, when it, you know, what's the sales reaction been to that? You just, you just uh, you know, talked about a, a very positive change you know, in terms of promotional and being able to put a price on a machine out front and get people in the door. Um, but ha has there been any kind of change in that negotiation dynamic? Because, you know, contractors, obviously a big part of their, you know, thought process when it comes to the dealer is the relationship, is the conversation. But how has that kind of been altered, that conversation uh, been altered for, for the guys selling the machines? Good question. Um, you know, we, we anticipated that there would be some resistance from our sales force, and there absolutely was when we introduced MSRP as a potential option. Um, and so with that resistance, we wanted to make sure that we came back with you know, facts and data before we went forth with MSRP. Um, and so really our global pricing team did a very extensive um, kind of research into individual dealers' transaction pricing and making sure that the MSRP uh, was in line with what a dealer would have and that we're not basically just, you know, cutting into, into the salesman's pocket, which is, um, you know, definitely something that we take seriously and we review it on a regular basis to make sure that we are not eroding our dealers. And because we cannot set pricing on behalf of our dealers, we want to make sure that we, you know, we kind of maintain that line. Um, so yes, there definitely, I mean, if, if I was out as a dealer selling machines, I wouldn't be happy about it either. Um, and so it was something that we had to talk about uh, with our with our dealers and with our um, with our sales reps, really, and just say, listen, the benefit of this is hopefully that you are going to touch customers that you wouldn't normally touch. You may have been covering the same five guys for you know ten years, and they they buy a few machines from you each year. We're talking about expanding your ter you know your kind of your reach and 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 the number of customers who will be attracted to the dealership. Um, and so overall, it's, it's really best, it's best for Caterpillar, it's best for the dealership, it's best for your business in the, in the long run. And again, you know, I think I said the same analogy to you last year, but there's no, you know, small business owner who dreams of only being a small business owner for their entire life. They want to really become big at some point. Uh, and so if, if they know that they've had a positive experience with a Caterpillar sales rep, or Caterpillar dealer, then, you know, we, we hope we've earned their loyalty that they'll continue to come back. But, you know, previously when we, you know, when you, we didn't have any, any pricing on those machines, um, it really became kind of a nervous type of thing, having a conversation, or we wouldn't even have a conversation with a customer because they thought that we were out of reach for their, for their price tag. So um, definitely some change management that needed to happen trepidation about displaying price. Um, and it, it, it does, it's, it's a very uncomfortable feeling to be able to do it. But we, we truly believe and we, we see now that it was absolutely the right thing to do, um, not just for our, our, our dealers, but definitely for our customers. Now, obviously sticker pricing is a huge part of this strategy because so many people, as I was saying earlier, in, in both automotive buying and equipment buying, you know, still feel more comfortable kind of looking at the machine or the car or truck or whatever that they're about to commit to purchasing. Um, but but online sales are the other major tentpole um, to this renewed plan. Since you've rolled that out, ha have you seen a meaningful increase in online sales um, a a about the same? Is it still kind of a, a work in progress? And, and, and what are you hearing from kind of customers about online sales and their comfort with that in general? So I just want to clarify too, we are not currently selling a machine end to end online. Um, we are getting pretty much all the way up through the uh, entire transaction process, but really it ends once the customer has to, has, a customer does have to go into a store or the machine has to be delivered in some way. Um, so there are a lot of end to end um, transactions where you may not see a customer until they actually you know, show up and like, I'm here to pick up my 259. Um, but but specifically on on the the you know the way that we're measuring success is we're looking at attributable sales to those online impressions, um, which is something that you can do well when it comes to a lot of the analytics that search engines provide and and your and the dealer's website provide. And so we do know we have seen a significant increase 
in the number of um, attributable sales to that to those um, specifically to those online machines. Um, even more when our dealers are participating in our, um, our media awareness campaigns where they're advertising in their local area, we definitely see a spike in terms of website traffic um, and definitely more, you know, really good leads going into the, into the dealers um, specifically. So we do know that, that folks are transacting. They're, it's always a hard balance because there's sometimes there's a, someone on, on, the, on the website and they keep adding a machine to cart and taking it out and it's maybe a, you know, a kid playing on a website. But by and large, um, you know, we are seeing a lot of ads to carts that are legitimate and either go through or it's something that we can then action, which is, which is um, you know, fantastic and we can follow up with that customer. Um, definitely seen more, um, definitely seen more machine uh, leads. You know, the number of sales on attachments is still something that we want to continue to pursue um, and as well as, as parts online which is especially now in the times of COVID is, is just something that um, we're, we're really glad we kind of had a, a good running start into this year, because if we were where we were, you know, 18 months ago, we'd be, we'd be pretty dead in the water um, trying to catch up uh, with, with the current global situation. Now, have you kind of heard from any customers that have communicated any kind of hesitance to online sales? Because I, I have to imagine, that one aspect might might be the the fear of knowing that whether or not you're getting getting a good deal. Um, negotiation and relationships are a really big part of the buying process, you know, for equipment customers. So I just wonder, like, if if a lot, you know, m might voice some kind of hesitance because they feel like they might be leaving money on the table. Have have you have you heard anything like that? Is this going to be like a process that's going to have to kind of get into their comfort zone over time? Yeah, most of our customers really use the dealer's website and, and shop.cat.com, which is where we, you know, we were pricing our machines through. Um, most of our customers are using it to just do their research. Here's the MSRP. Uh, and, and really most know that they're not going to pay that price, but they do have to have a conversation. So, you know, maybe um, in five years time, everyone's going to be buying 259s online and knowing that they have the best price. But even, you know, even parts, for example, when you buy a filter on a machine, if this is the first, you know, air filter that you bought for your 259, you may not know if I, you've got the right one or not. So you do want to talk to someone. So that's why we, we, we've really made sure that if we do have a customer with a query that comes in online, that we're able to follow up with them quickly, whether it be for machine or attachment or, or, or part, um, and get them the answers that they need. But yeah, for, we're not to that uh, stage yet where someone is ready to just, let me add like a, a few skid steers and a 980 and uh, an articulated truck and, and I'll, I'll pick it up next week. We're, I don't think that we're, we're there yet. The large fleet customers though, um, they might be, that might be something that they're interested in because you know they have an account with us, they've done it before, they know what price they're kind of working with and they probably worked it with, through with their sales rep. Um, so there's definitely th those folks, but, you know, thinking again about the small business owner, um, we never really expected for them to fully be transacting online, uh, sight unseen, I guess. Um, and one of the other questions, uh, with, with online pricing that I had has, is it's got to be, a, a there, or at some point it had to have been a challenge in, in terms of working out how to display or pull in all of these uh, different dealer uh, uh, prices uh, across the country, kind of just like based on your on your location or proximity to a particular dealer um, and the price that they're setting for this. How, how did you guys go after kind of solving that? Was that really um, just just a, a, a you know allowing the dealers to kind of come in and make sure that their their prices are set? Was that a big change uh, for for them? Kind of go into that that challenge of all these you know, different prices based on whatever website you, you happen to be looking at? You know, if we take a machine, for example, we want to, again, offer the very basic level of configurations. Um, and that's what we used. And going into this, uh, this year with our dealers, we said, hey, look, here's a list of configurations that we're going to price, 259 cab and canopy. Then you get the north and the south, you know, with the snow package and the, and the non-snow package just keeping it very simple for them to do. Um, what we've asked them to do is when they do their pricing, you know, don't be adding a, a bunch of different extras on top of it, meaning tax and everything else like that. 
the base stripped down machine, basically a base, base, base model will help reduce all that other variability between taxes and freight and any sort of pre-delivery inspections that need to be done. Um, and so kind of going into that, that's where we've, we've decided that that's, that's really gonna be our, our, our way to move forward. Um, now, everyone, this is still new for everyone. So there are some folks who wanna be able to con further configure the machines, which that is available. But if we talk about the machines that, we, that Caterpillar sells the most of, it's going to be, you know, 259 cab canopy with some really, really basic um, uh, standard mo uh, features on, on that specific machine. So that's kind of where we, where we led with the dealers. Uh, and they have been receptive to that once they understand that this is really just a way for, again, explaining that the price is affordable to a, to a retail customer. Um, you know, it, when, you, when you pick up a new car, you pretty much see, I know that I'm going to pay tax on that machine. I'm going to have to pay a registration. I'm going to have to pay, you know, extra if I want the, the fancy paint or something else like that. So going through that, that, um, that process, we, we worked through with the dealers. And again, we need to have regular reviews to make sure that our pricing is in, our MSRP is in line with, um, with dealers pricing and any changes that happen as part of market conditions. But, uh, but by and large, um, you know, the, the, the price has been a, a pretty kind of fair level for them to understand that, yeah, we need to just we really need to just promote the awareness that our machines are affordable. Um, and, you know, I, I, something we haven't addressed yet, but that has obviously had an impact on, on retail across the country has been the uh, COVID-19 coronavirus pandemic. Um, what kind of uh, challenges has that thrown into your lap? Um, what have you guys seen in terms of uh, activity? I, I know a lot. I know a lot of dealers that I've spoken with have actually, you know, not seen any kind of drop off in, in activity. And I'm sure that that, you know, from from what you guys are seeing, base, you know, it just kind of varies based on location. But kind of in general, if you can, kind of give me an an, an idea of from the retail side of things how this whole uh, pandemic has, has impacted you guys? Um, you know, it, it's, a, it's a really, you know, definitely, I'm sure everyone has said this, but this is not something that we ever could have anticipated or really planned for. Um, definitely by and large, if anything, this has accelerated our dealers need to have an online presence because no one's going into the stores. Everyone is home more often um, or more frequently and they're doing more research online. So it actually accelerated our need to deploy our equipment online strategy to more dealers on a faster basis. So kind of in the early part of the year, we're kind of like, all right, guys, you know, the, your time's in this month and this time, ah, I'm not ready to go. But then as soon as COVID hit, we started getting calls. I need to go online next week. I need to go online right now. My customers are asking for it. Um, and luckily we've been able to respond and really make sure that all of our dealers are taken care of and slotted. Um, and that they have a strategy moving moving forward in place by the end of this year. Um, so without a doubt, COVID has changed the way that the, the dealers have been doing business, and not just for having an online presence, but then some very specific needs. Things like parts pickup. Most people don't want to go into any sort of common space. So you know, can we help with drop boxes or kind of the remote delivery of, of parts? Um, several dealers have set up a specific COVID landing page on their websites to truly address this uh, and reduce the amount of touch points that a customer would have with either a machine, a sales rep, with parts or anything else like that. Um, so I guess from a, a larger macro level, our biggest, the biggest um, impact it had on retail was we tried to understand what all the dealers are hearing and then also what they're doing, try to amass that together and let them know, hey, your, your brother in the north is doing this and this, this gal over here is doing this so that they can kind of make sure that they are, um, you know, getting ideas of how to respond best to their, to, their, um, to their customer base. Strong online presence, you know, more uh, people to be able to reach via chat or via phone has been really, really critical. And so some of that focus on really making sure our stores all look uh, fantastic um, it's still a, a strong focal point for Caterpillar, but it is not the top retail focal point for 2020. We want to make sure that our dealers are really, again, reaching customer needs in, in whatever manner that they need to 
um, and, and generally non-traditionally, for which for me, for us, it means not face-to-face. -face. It means online chat, FaceTime, WhatsApp, um, you know, phone, that sort of thing. So those, those, that's been the biggest play for us um, since COVID had hit with, uh, with retail. And, and we're, again, we're still learning on, on what's working the best for folks. Um, the dealers who were able to kind of flip very quickly, um, put together those COVID landing pages and explain to customers what the precautions that they're taking, what they can do, how they're working with customers. They've been very successful in kind of staying ahead of the curve. Um, and, and frankly, we've been surprised to see, you know, the industry specifically in landscaping um, stay as strong as it's been. From that perspective, it's been a little bit surprising. And we've, we've had to make sure that the dealers are saying, okay, it's, it's crisis time, but we have to make sure that we continue to ensure that our, 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 our um, we have enough, you guys have enough product on the ground um, and that you're continuing to reach the, your customers in non-traditional ways. Well, now that you've got kind of going back to the, the rollout of, of the new retail strategy, now that you've got the ball rolling on this and, it, and it's such a it's such a huge product or such a huge project, um, many years in the making. So I know it's probably like uh, but but I imagine that you specifically are, are looking beyond it still. Um, so tell me a little bit about what you've got your eye on in terms of things that that you're still hoping to accomplish for the retail strategy in the next few years? Are, are, there, are there particular aspects of the current plan that, that still need tweaking or perfecting? Or is there, or is there something else kind of like new on the horizon already for you? Well, um, you know, we, frankly, we're just getting started. Um, we needed this to really play out with machine sales, which is kind of Caterpillar's bread and butter. But knowing that this is a, you know, a relatively small, uh, portion of our overall business um, is, is really key. And, and what we've got our eyes set on now is, is making sure that we're connecting with customers after they purchase those machines. You know, we, we, we try to get our, our dealers retail branches to have as much of a one-stop shop as possible. And a year ago, that meant having a machine there, having someone there who can take their, you know, kind of work their order through quickly and get them out the door. But now we know that we want to be more than just a stop for machines. We want to be a stop for parts. If a customer needs to rent a, a scissor lift, for example, they should be able to do that at, at, at any, any Caterpillar branch. Again, this is down the road. But we're really looking at ways of making it easier for customers to get what they everything that they need from one location because we know that they don't have time to be driving all over town to find a scissor lift and then, you know, a, a hammer for to rent and then, uh, pick up their machine as well and get it serviced. So as much as we can bundle into the dealer's current facilities, we're really working to, to do that. That's obviously going to take some a little bit more time down the road, um, but that's a, it's, a, it's a critical area for us. We really started taking a look at uh, a lot of our part sales, specifically in you know, how our, our customers continue to interact with the Caterpillar dealer and we, we would be remiss if we didn't ask, you know, why Caterpillar dealers aren't getting the sale of parts. Um, and it really just comes down to the fact of uh, awareness, visibility on pricing, convenience. So all of those elements are really what we're trying to pull into that, that dealer retail strategy and make sure that they are truly a one-stop shop, um, mimicking what we've already done on the machines. How do we stay in touch with second and third machine owners um, on, on machines that, you know, we don't necessarily have visibility on. All of those things are super critical, super key. Um, and then again, the, a lot of our dealers offer, um, you know, different service hours, flat rate pricing on, on repairs, but our customers don't know about it. So this is part of where retail kicks in and we're going to have to make sure that our customer base knows that our dealers, you know, we want to, we want to be in their, with the customer for the life of their business. And that means you, we know you're not purchasing a, purchasing a machine every year, but we wanna be with you and make sure that you're, that machine is, is running, it's going, um, you're well supported and that you're not without a machine so that you're, you're losing your business. Uh, and so for that reason, we really have to focus on, um, on aftermarket between um, parts, sale, you know, additional part sales, and then of course um, the, the service piece which is super critical, especially for customers here in North America. Sometimes customers may change their own oil. 
but that's about it. You know, mo there's most of our customers don't feel comfortable changing out the, the tracks on a, on, a, on a compact track loader, for example. They'd rather bring it to a dealer. Maybe they don't have time. So, you know, fast and easy uh, scheduling of, of that type of service options. Um, questions, you know, I don't, am I, I'm looking online and I don't know if this is the right part for my machine. Can I call someone quickly and get an answer quickly or am I gonna be on hold for, you know, 45 minutes? Those type of things are what we're looking on. Um, and we know that when we continue to, to really um, keep that relationship strong with the, with the customers, that they'll be with us for the long haul. So that's really the next phase of, of, of where we're, we're headed to. Well, Alex, that's, that's all the time that we have today. But um, thank you so much for, for hanging out with us and, and for, for joining us to talk a little bit about, um, you know, everything that you've got going on and, and obviously this big kind of like revamp of the cat retail strategy. I know that you're, you're very busy. So I, I really appreciate your time. And yeah, thanks. I uh, hope we get to talk again soon. Thanks so much, Wayne. We really appreciate you uh, having us on and um, hope to chat with you again in the future. All right, so that's going to wrap it up for us here on our discussion of the new cat retail strategy one year in, the added machines, the added convenience of being able to research pricing online to see a sticker price at the dealership. But we want to know your thoughts. Let us know what you think of this new retail strategy. Um, let us know what you think of online machine shopping, even just online machine researching and the, the kind of convenience of being able to go online and get at least that directional starting point in terms of uh, a price that you can kind of negotiate down from. Let us know what you think in the comments below. And if you like this video or found the information in it useful in any kind of way in your next machine purchase or rental, do us a favor and hit that like button below. It really helps our channel out. And if you want more videos on the latest in the construction industry, heavy equipment, gear, trucks, and more, subscribe to our channel and turn on notifications, hit the bell, so you're getting up to the minute alerts whenever we drop a new video. All right, guys, thank you so much for watching. We always appreciate your time. We will see you next time. Thank <laughs> you.